Hi guys, so today uh, I decided to create like a new uh, series of video. So this one will be the first one and it will be an introduction to black box fuzzing. So um, as usual, uh, if uh, you want to download the content and everything uh, will be uh, directly available right there on my website. Uh, so you can just um, enter your email and you will get access and so on. So the first um, video of this series will be about uh, binary only fuzzing, black box fuzzing, using AFL++ and especially the QMU uh, mode. So let me uh, first discuss about what is AFL++. So uh, basically AFL++ is uh, American Fuzzy Loop, uh, so AFL, uh, with some additional stuff. That's the plus plus. Uh, and especially those, all those additional stuff are uh, actually uh, community patches and improvement done by the community since the release of um, AFL um, that was like in 2013, something like that, or, or 15, don't remember, but yeah. Um, so basically, uh, it's um, an AFL on steroid, uh, if you want. And basically, there is one specific mode inside uh, that is called the QMU mode. So for those who are familiar with uh, fuzzing, uh, basically you are providing random data as an input to a program and uh, you are monitoring if you get any crashes. Uh, the main difficulties is um, if you don't have the source code, uh, it's going to be complicated for you to instrument the code uh, and get some feedback about what is happening inside uh, your target during fuzzing. Uh, that's where uh, QMU uh, the QMU mode uh, come in place because uh, actually QMU will be able, since you are fuzzing inside QMU, you will be able to get feedback from QMU and you will know uh, if uh, this specific input you are providing is reaching some new pass into the code or not and so on. So uh, basically we are doing coverage guided fuzzing using QMU as a, a feedback uh, processor. So that's the idea. So, um, okay, let's move on. So basically, um, we're gonna, uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna use QMU. So there is uh, multiple um, stuff to, to know about that. First of all, you will need to install uh, AFL++. So I will uh, let you all the uh, link as usual. Uh, basically, you have this cheat sheet uh, directly uh, below. So uh, for the installation, you need to in first install AFL++ and then you will need to install uh, the uh, QMU support. Uh, once uh, everything will be done, um, you will need to choose a target. So um, I decide um, to choose a target with the source code that is available. Um, um, the main idea for me is uh, to show you right now how to do that in a black box way. So without any source code, with an already compiled binary. And then I will invite you to um, try to instrument and uh, recompile the target. And like that, you will see uh, what is the difference, especially in terms of cost and so on. So um, let's start with um, the target. So the target for today is PDF info. So this uh, PDF info is a tool available on Linux in, in my case. So let me show you that right there. Uh, let, uh, let me zoom in maybe, it will be better. Okay. So uh, basically the idea is pretty simple. Uh, it will just show like a bunch of information associated to um, a PDF. So um, PDF info, um, I already have uh, an example directly on the, on the corpus. We will show that right after. But basically I took this PDF and it seems that um, there is a, you have some producer information, some date, uh, if there is any JavaScript inside and so on. So you have a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of information about the PDF. So, um, of course, this tool will basically do parsing of the PDF and uh, it will uh, detect a bunch of stuff. And uh, after that, it will show you the information. Uh, also, it's possible to provide some additional flags to PDF info. So let me show you with a dash H. Uh, as you can see, we have, uh, for example, there is some JavaScript right there on this one. We can actually print what is the JavaScript inside. 
So let's do dash GS and as you can see, we have uh, some stuff. So that's interesting uh, because that's also mean uh, this uh, JavaScript have been parsed as well. We don't know exactly what is happening on this PDF and four. Uh, I mean, um, I only told you that it was this one, but we have not uh, take a look at the source code actually. So uh, that's uh, why it's pretty interesting. We definitely don't know what is happening inside and, and even what in which language it have been uh, written. So what we're going to do uh, next is actually to run the further. So, um, I mean, first of all, we need to copy this PDF info. So uh, actually, I already copied it, but basically it was in uh, co copy uh, user bin PDF info. So it was already there uh, and I just copied that locally. So if we are taking a look at this one, PDF info, you will see that it's a uh, an elf binary, uh, elf 64, uh, and so on. Uh, in terms of size, it's a pretty huge file, I would say 50, 55K. So, I mean, there is a bunch of stuff that can happen uh, inside, uh, I think. It's a pretty easy one. Okay, let's move on. Right now, we need to... Um, run the further so for that uh, of course i already install afl plus plus in my local repository so if i want to access it i will need to do uh, afl uh, plus plus and uh, i'm directly have access to the afl fuzz uh, binary that is this one so as you can see it's the um, helping mode we have the afl plus plus with this specific version uh, the really interesting parameter are this one. So it's the required parameter, the input directory and the output directory. And then we have a bunch of options, especially the one that is interesting for us is the dash Q uh, binary on instrumentation using the QMU mode. As you can see, there is also a Frida mode. There is a unicorn mode, a wine mode if you want to uh, fuzz um, Windows binary on your Linux system and so on. So as you can see, a bunch of stuff that's what I like the most with AFL++. Uh, basically, AFL++ is not my favorite fuzzer. Uh, I prefer like unfuzz or libfuzzer um, for white box fuzzing. Uh, but for um, black box, definitely AFL++ provides you a, a lot of stuff to start with. And that's why it's a, it's a really interesting tool uh, for a beginner. And then uh, we will also use, uh, for example, the dash D enable deterministic uh, fuzzing because it will help the, the fuzzer, but you will see. So that's basically the, the idea. So uh, as you can see, we need an input and an output folder. So the output folder, you can just do MKD out. Uh, so I already have an output folder from a previous run. So let me do a MKD out too. Uh, and for the input folder, I have an in folder, but let's, um, I, I think I already provide like um, not a lot of stuff inside. Yeah, only one uh, PDF, so nothing fancy there. And we're going to run the further. So let me uh, take the command line. So that's basically this one. As you can see, um, we have AFL++, dash Q, QMU mode. We are using dash D for the deterministic mode dash i we are providing the input so let's provide in and da dash out let's provide two um, that's the new one we create dash dash and after that you are providing the um, uh, command line and the argument so uh, dash uh, dot dash pdf info and at at that means you're going to rip uh, ifl will replace at at by the fuzzing uh, target the fuzzing input Let's run that. So it will be pretty quick. I mean, IFL will just read the file and uh, try to do a dry run. That means uh, provide taking this file inside the target and monitoring what is happening. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's uh, actually running. Uh, there is uh, not a lot of stuff that is happening. Uh, first of all, uh, since we are only providing one input, it's really poor um, because it's uh, only one PDF. Um, 
so by default we are not covering a lot of path and a lot of uh, depth inside the um, program and uh, of course in terms of speed we will get something really slow like uh, 200 300 and, and so on uh, even less and the main reason for that is because of qmu um, as i mentioned we are using qmu so we are fuzzing inside QMU uh, and of course uh, it's more slow because QMU uh, is uh, basically will interpret the different um, opcode and so on and it's way more EV than just fuzzing uh, natively uh, the, the piece of code. So um, the other stuff that is interesting is right there, the runtime. So it's uh, for how long you are running the fuzzer and the last new pass is um, how many times it have been uh, since the um, since we discover some new interesting sample? As you can see, um, it's not really good. I mean, we are not discovering a lot of new paths, and as I mentioned, the main reason is because we only have one corpus, one input inside the, the corpus. So let's improve that. So for that, uh, we're gonna uh, create a new corpora, and that's what I've done in order to improve the fuzzing. You have multiple techniques. You can um, find um, you can generate from some PDF by yourself based on the grammar. So I provide you some, some information about the format and so on. And you can also um, grab some PDF file on the web and provide that as an input to the further. And you can also use um, some uh, PDF like on GitHub or like on um, some unit testes and that's exactly what I've done so right there at this address you have some PDFs that are available and I basically copy everything into this corpus PDF um, so you have a bunch of PDF let's see how many um, 460 so um, we have a good corpora to start with and we can restart the further so let me do uh, out to and corpus corpus PDF. Uh, let's run that. So as you can see, uh, IFL will actually process everything, do a dry run. So that means it will take uh, one of the input of the uh, corpus, it will process that, it will monitor what is happening, and so on. Um, so you can see that not all those, those uh, PDF are uh, interesting. Uh, there is a bunch of warning telling, okay, this stuff look useless and so on. Uh, but you need also to remember that I have not providing any argument to the to the target, so we are just using PDF info and the PDF file name. Uh, so maybe if I'm providing like a dash GS and so on, uh, maybe we're going to trigger some new part of the code. We don't know. So let's uh, let's see, uh, and at some point you will get your further uh, running. So uh, as you can see, we have the runtime right there. We have uh, 120 um, test cases per second. And as you can see, we have uh, some new paths that have been uh, discovered. Um, also in terms of um, favorite paths, we have some information there. Right there, it's the mutation, the stage process, which mutation algorithm is currently used uh, and so on. Uh, we have uh, 461 uh, total pass, and before that, it was, um, let me see, only six pass. So as you can see, by providing some new corpora, uh, we increase a lot uh, the um, coverage of the target, uh, and so on and so on. So that's, uh, this one was basically, uh, I mean, I just launched this one. Um, I already launched uh, another one, um, this uh, this night, uh, the, the previous night, basically. So it was on the out folder. Uh, basically, if I'm trying to reuse an output folder that have already been used, it will propose to um, uh, do an auto resume. That means it will try to restart the fuzzing from the last point um, it was um, there, basically. So let's do AFL auto resume. Um, and run that. So it will dry run all the file that is, of course, in the import corpora, plus all the files that was already in the IFL++ queue. That means all the files that uh, was uh, found uh, during uh, fuzzing in a previous uh, run, uh, basically. 
So let's wait uh, for it um, and uh, you will see. So that's basically the idea. As you can see, it's really simple, really straightforward, uh, nothing fancy. You just need AFL++ um, and um, your target. And after that, you can already start to um, learn everything about fuzzing, like uh, how to improve your fuzzing. As you can see, the best way, one of the best way to improve your fuzzing is not to write some custom f fancy fuzzer and so on. Uh, the first thing you should do to improve fuzzing is start with um, getting a better corpora uh, because um, it will basically uh, improve yourself for free and uh, the fact that you are improving the corpora will also uh, you will also leverage uh, and it will help the feather to mutate some more interesting sample and so on uh, so let's take a look. Uh, as you can see, uh, so the, the total runtime was like 20 hours and uh, there is around two cycles done. And from this uh, 460 uh, input uh, file, basically uh, I was getting to uh, 500 uh, total pass. Um, it's slow. Uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, basically uh, running inside QMU. Um, you also um, need to uh, take in consideration that it's single threaded. Um, so of course it will be better uh, if you are uh, running that with multiple instance uh, and so on. You can do multiple stuff. I will in, really invite you to take a look at the um, AFL++ readme, especially like um, this one. Um, let me check, using binary only. Uh, Okay, like this one, this one. So basically you can do a bunch of stuff. You can also use some specific um, component available in AFL++ that will help you. So uh, yeah, definitely look forward to the AFL documentation and it will be really useful. For the PDF, it's uh, actually there. It's actually all the tests is from uh, PDF.js. You can find a lot of them uh, on on internet, uh, even or also a, a lot more on GitHub. Like some people are providing some fuzzing corpora for that and so on. Really interesting to take a look at all um, all kind of PDF parser written in multiple uh, language because you will uh, get some unit tests uh, hopefully and so on uh, so that's the idea let me uh, take a look at that uh, yeah that's uh, that's pretty much all i want to mention um if you want to go deeper uh, and especially if you want to learn more about white box fuzzing that means fuzzing when you have the source code and so on um, i have uh, a training that I released uh, some months ago um, and uh, it's available and you will basically learn everything you need to learn with uh, what C and C++ white box fuzzing. So let me know if you are interesting. You have uh, all the links on the description and um, for uh, the next video of this series don't hesitate to um, uh, register and uh, put on the comment below uh, what uh, you will like to see uh, next. So uh, see you next time and uh, have a good day.